colour is often used in films to make a scene resonate emotionally or to evoke a certain feeling in us as the audience. For this 25 part video series I have analysed every James Bond film to find examples where colour choices might have been made deliberately by Bond directors or cinematographers to achieve these effects. A fair warning, since 8 out of the 15 cinematographers have sadly passed away and so have 5 of the 13 directors, much of my analysis will be hypothetical. This is definitely nerd territory, so let's dig in. <laughs> When you analyse the colours of the third Bond film, Goldfinger, you naturally stumble upon the colour gold. No surprise there, I guess. And as in the previous videos, let's take a look at the 3D colour space first to uh, visualise how the film's colours are distributed uh, across its 1 hour and 50 runtime. Um, Indeed, yellow and gold tones dominate the film. They have the widest distribution of hues, as you can clearly see here on the right. I'll zoom in a bit. So all these yellow dots and its varying hues going into white here in the middle, um, they reflect gold. You can see it's quite a big patch. And if you've seen the previous two videos of Dr. Noen from Russia with Love, um, I noted that there was a lot of red and a lot of blue. This has significantly toned down. There is a bit of red here, but that's mainly unimportant stuff. It's the barrels that Bond detonates at the beginning of the film, so they are not really important. And then there's th th things like sunshades, and uh, that's what the red represents. Blue is almost non-existent. There's light blue tones, but not as many dark blue tones. There's patches of green, but that is mainly uh, the golf scene between Bond and Goldfinger at the Stoke Poges Golf Club. The rest is pretty much gold, as you would expect. So, let's look at this gold color, which is the most prominent. And let's switch into the color palette and the opening titles. Uh, this is where we see gold for the first time. And as I said, the color gold and its various shades and tones feature heavily in the film. So let's assemble the most important, which are all connected to the film's villain, Auric Goldfinger. We have Goldfinger's dress at the opening in Miami, then the golden girl in Bond's hotel room, Goldfinger's golf dress his car, and even his men wear elements of gold in their uniforms. Then we have the laser room, mostly gold, then the golden tuxedo, Pussy Galore is wearing shades of gold, the jet has golden pillows, golden glass, golden assistant, then we have Pussy Galore's flying circus wearing elements of gold, the nerve gas canisters, the mint julep has a gold color, and the dynamite, and of course Goldfinger's golden revolver. But there are also scenes in which gold is not immediately associated with the villain. When you look at Bond's hotel room at the Fontainebleau, for example. Let's skip to that. Hold on. So, there. There we are. That's uh, Bond's hotel room. You would think it's the villain's hotel room, but I get into that in a minute. So, the wall behind the bed is in a gold tone. So is the bed frame. And even the lampshade, let me skip to that. So over here is, a, is an overview of the room. The lampshade, although it's more copper, but um, yeah, well, it fits into that. And when he goes to the kitchen, look at the opposite wall of the bed. That is also a gold fabric then most of the wood in this scene appears like in a gold color. And then you have this middle kitchen element. You see the one with the holes and the copper pot on top. There is also gold behind it. And then finally, when Oddjob knocks Bond unconscious, you have Oddjob's shadow here. And we know that this is a wood paneled wall. But look at the color palette. Right in the middle, there is 
a gold tone. So it appears to us as gold. And the light streak in the middle even makes it more dramatic. And it is interesting that Bond's room has all these gold details, but Goldfinger's room that we have seen earlier does not. Now let's take a look at Goldfinger's room, which is rather interesting. We have to go back a few frames. So Bond lets himself in with the help of the maid. And look at Goldfinger's room. It is mostly white and green tones. But there should be a lot of gold because he's Goldfinger, the villain of the film that bears his name. <laughs> um, but it isn't. Bond's room is gold. And some people have uh, said over the years that Bond is not actually in his room. He is in Goldfinger's room when he meets uh, Jill Masterson. But uh, that's completely wrong because when he picks up the phone, uh, reception says, yes, Mr. Bond. So it must be his room. Uh, don't know why people are led to believe that he is not in his own room. But this is definitely Goldfinger's room and there is very, very little gold here. Why is it in Bond's room? No idea. Maybe it's foreshadowing. You never know. And now, this will be a short video because throughout the film, Goldfinger, I found no obvious color choices that would let me to believe there is a message attached to it, except for one. And we have to skip to the 1 hour and 25 mark for this. Uh, let me just quickly find it. 20, 25. Here we are. So there is something interesting happening here. Right after the conversation of Bond and Goldfinger. Up until this point, we have only seen Miss Galore wearing shades of gold as a sign that she is attached to the villain Auric Goldfinger. She is his pilot and a part of his plan, Operation Grand Slam. But something important happens when the two have their conversation on the veranda a few minutes earlier. Let's skip back to that. Hold on, let me see. There it is. They are having a conversation. Drinking mint julep, of course. Uh, let's start the film from here. And... Um, note that she is still wearing light shades of gold here. In this scene and when Goldfinger remarks that Operation Grand Slam will make her a very rich woman and he asks what she plans to do with her share when it is finished she moves her hand away from his and says she will settle down on a little island in the Bahamas with a sign that says no trespassing. She's effectively just handed in her resignation to Mr. Goldfinger. Let's stop the film there. Then comes the costume change. There. Interesting. A light purple blouse matched with purple top trousers. Considering that purple stands for transformation and enlightenment, this is the time in the film where Miss Galore has changed her allegiance. This is confirmed later when Felix tells Bond that it was her who helped the CIA switch the deadly nerf gas into a harmless substance that was sprayed over Fort Knox. That was her. It was her doing. She foiled Goldfinger's plan. Um, as I said in the beginning, this is only a theory because in the end, when we see her here, uh, she's wearing gold again. <laughs> Uh, okay, so this this sort of mm, foils my <laughs> explanation, but um, well, maybe she just didn't find the time to exchange her whole wardrobe into something more that says I'm not working for Goldfinger anymore. But uh, yeah, uh, I thought the color purple it stood out. It was so totally different from the rest that she was wearing that I thought it could be the message of her changing her allegiance to Goldfinger. And uh, yeah, um, there isn't much more in Goldfinger where I would say, hey, this has a message. So the video is rather short and uh, I will continue work on Thunderball next. Um, 
it could be that I run into the situation that not many of the films have a color-coded message in them. But um, as I go through the films, I will try to find them. Um, maybe there still is something. But for now, thanks for watching. I hope you will have a great day. If you don't want to miss a video out of this series, be sure to hit the like and subscribe button. Maybe also turn on the bell notification and uh, when Thunderball, the Colors of 007 Thunderball is coming, you will be notified immediately. Until then, have a great day. Bye.